We interrupt Speed's regularly scheduled program to bring you this Speed Center special report. In a span of just one weekend, NASCAR crowns not one, but three champions. Champions of its three premier national series. Drivers and teams who have turned adversity into gold, showed passion when it mattered most, and when challenged, answered the call. After 25,000 miles of racing, the moment of truth has arrived. Good afternoon and welcome into the Speed Center Special Report. I'm Adam Alexander. For those of you watching along at Speed.com, we're glad to have you with us. NASCAR's championship weekend is here. Today, though, still alive for the title in the Camping World Truck, Nationwide and Sprint Cup Series will meet with the media in anticipation of what should be a great weekend on track. Bob Dillner is in South Florida, and we will go live there shortly. First, we remind you how tight these championship battles are. We begin in the Sprint Cup Series. Brad Keselowski enters the weekend, leading Jimmy Johnson by 20 points. These their numbers at the Homestead Miami Speedway. They've combined for 15 starts, but how about Jimmy Johnson? Seven top tens in 11 starts at the track. If Brad finishes 15th or better, he is your 2012 champion. Over on the Nationwide Series side, it's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. who's trying for his second consecutive championship. A 16th place finisher better on Saturday afternoon will get him his second straight crown. And you see the numbers. He's been great at Miami, averaging a third place finish. The Camping World Truck Series battle is tight. James Busher leading Timothy Peters by 11 points. And the rookie, Ty Dillon, is only 12 behind. Ty's only start in South Florida coming one year ago. And, of course, you can watch the Camping World Truck Series season finale. It happens tomorrow night live on Speed. Our coverage with a setup and Chris Devota beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And now we go to the Homestead Miami Speedway and the Media Center. Our Bob Dillner Championship Weekend about to get underway, Bob. A warm and beautiful day here at Homestead Miami Speedway. All three contenders from all three NASCAR National Series here today to talk about their championship efforts this weekend in the finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. Of course, a lot of focus on the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. 20 points separating Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski. A lot of people didn't think Brad Keselowski would ever be contending for a title in just his third full season. But today's press conference begins with the closest championship battle of all, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. For that, we're going to going to go to the stage with my colleague Chris Devota and cup champion Rusty Wallace. Hello everybody I'm Rusty Wallace with ESPN. And I'm Chris Devota with Fox and Speed. Honored to be standing next to class of 2013 NASCAR Hall of Fame inductee and 1989 Sprint Cup champion Rusty Wallace. Well, we're um, ready for a spectacular weekend, aren't we? We is going to be fantastic. And on behalf of the France family and everyone at NASCAR, we want to welcome you today to the 2012 Championship Contenders Press Conference right here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Well, it's going to be a big weekend. We're going to crown three NASCAR champions at Ford Championship Weekend. The title is going to be decided in the Truck Series, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And it should be a whale of a race. And today we're actually going to visit with all of the drivers across all three of NASCAR's national series who all come into Homestead still in contention for the championship. That's a total of eight drivers. Safe to say eight certainly is enough. It's an elite eight for sure. Yeah, that's true. We're going to have a quick rundown for our farm of the day. We're going to meet with the championship contenders in three different segments. Each segment will include a short question and answer session. In addition to breakout sessions we'll have later on. Our first segment involves the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. So, Chris, it's kind of all yours now. Okay. We begin our program by spotlighting tomorrow night's NASCAR Camping World Truck Series season finale here at Homestead Miami Speedway, the Ford EcoBoost 200. Now, this has arguably been the most competitive season in series history. And I have two reasons why. 15 different winners, including nine first-time winners, both of those are series records. Like last year, we have reached the end of the season-long battle with three drivers still in championship contention. Well, in 2012, the one who has been dominant on mile and a half is the 31 of Busher. And Busher has issues. Your point leader into the wall. We'll go to Homestead. I guess we're still leading the points. It's going to be a big win for Timothy Peters at Bristol. I just
just thank the good Lord for, for being with me and letting me win two in one year. Joy Colt has been able to get around Timothy Peters for the third spot. Now we have a shot going into Homestead, and that's all we ask for. He's going to grab his first ever Camping World Truck Series win. I finally did that one in NASCAR race, and to finally do it means so much. Around goes Brendan Gawne. Ty Dillon also involved in this. My guys are tough, and we're not giving up. Our three championship contenders in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series come into South Florida separated by just 12 points. It is NASCAR's tightest championship battle. Introducing first a driver who is no ordinary rookie. He is third, in play, third place thanks to a consistent season with 17 top 10 finishes. Welcome, please. One of our sport's bright young stars, driver of the number three Bass Pro Shops Tracker Boats Chevrolet Silverado for Richard Childress Racing. 20-year-old Ty Dillon. Next up, this driver in second place going into Friday's finale. 11 points out of first. He has two poles, two wins, 10 top fives, and now a chance at the championship. Welcome, please, the driver of the number 17 Toyota Tundra of Red Horse Racing, Timothy Peters. And our NASCAR Camping World Truck Series points leader, he was up here last year and trying to finish what he started came into this season without a NASCAR win. He now has more Truck Series wins this season than any other driver. He drives the number 31 Great Clips Turner Motorsports Chevrolet. Welcome, James Busher. Okay, guys, let's get some quick opening comments from each of you before we hand over to the media for a Q&A session. Ty, you're 12 points back, trying to win the championship, just like your brother Austin did last year. And should you win that, by the way, you would break his record as the youngest series champion in history. Have there been, has there been any trash talking in your family? I guess, yeah. All right, this button threw me off. But uh, no, you know, um, he's just pushing me to, to go and get the championship too. He wants to see me succeed. And um, it's been a great year for us. And we've been really consistent in um, these last few races. We've really taken ourselves out of being rookies and, and taken ourselves to uh, championship contenders. Um, we've been very fortunate in, in finishing where we have and, and what we've done. So uh, we're going to keep battling, and um, this weekend raises a great opportunity for us to, to win a race and, and hopefully win the championship. So uh, we've been getting faster and faster every week, so our plan this weekend is to, to lead the most laps and win the race, and where the championship falls, and it'll, it'll hopefully come to us. But uh, we're just going to do what we can do, and that's win races. Timothy, like Ty, you have a little bit of ground to make up in the championship, but not much at all, just 11 points. But you've had something else uh, in your life sort of to focus on. Your wife getting ready to deliver your, your first child in just over a month is the scheduled due date. Has that helped calm your nerves? Because you're worrying about something entirely different as well. That definitely puts a lot in perspective, for sure. <laughs> um, you know, she got cleared by the uh, doctor to come this weekend. She couldn't come to Texas or Phoenix, and uh, it just is comforting for her to be with me on that plane this morning hit it down here in the position that we're in and it it has helped ease my mind um you know to think about being a parent first time i mean everybody goes through it that has a kid and uh you know you want to be good at it so it's it's take a little bit of the the pressure of coming down here but also maybe add it a little bit because uh you know it'd be cool to welcome into the world as a championship dad Timothy, by the way, our veteran of this group at the uh, ripe old age of 32, I just want to point out. So, James, you were up here, like I said, on this stage last year trying to finish off what you started. Without giving away too much, I know you have a strategy for Friday night. If you could share maybe a little bit or tell us what last year taught you, what, how, why you're a better driver now maybe than you were last year. Uh, I think our whole team's just better than we were last year, um, you know, I, from every aspect. And, um, you know, we've... We gel together very well, and uh, you know Michael Shelton and I have, have come a long way. Uh, him on the pit box and, and me as a driver. And, and last year we were sitting on the stage with no wins, and uh, this year we have four in the Truck Series. So um, you know I think uh, I think we're in the position we need to be in. Um, looked like we were going to have a, a bigger point lead with five to go at Phoenix, but uh, you know that, that wasn't in the cards for us, and, and we had a problem and, and blew right front tire. So. Uh, I guess we just like to keep it interesting in the truck series. So, uh, you know, we're, we're still leading, so we're still where we want to be. Uh, we just have to go go out on the track tomorrow and, and do what we know how to do and, and run up front. And, uh, you know, we've won all four races on mile and a half uh, this year, so it uh, plays into our cards pretty well. So I, I feel good about this weekend. 
Okay, let's have some fun with these guys. To conduct our question and answer session with our Truck Series contenders, here's the Senior Director of Competition Communications for NASCAR, Kerry Tharp. Thank you very much, Krista. It's great to see a full house here at the Media Center, Homestead, Miami, Speedway Championship weekend. We're going to get it started off right now. We're going to take a few questions for our NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Championship contenders. If you have a question, raise your hand and we'll come around with a wireless microphone. Please state your name and affiliation, and if you can, limit it to one question. We have four mic runners, if I can introduce them very quickly. Edward Williams from here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Lenny Santiago from the World Center of Racing at Daytona International Speedway. Betsy Mayer, our good friend up at Watkins Glen International, and our newest teammate, the communications manager of American Le Mans series, Aaron Siekel, is here with us today. So raise your hand and we'll get started. Start right here with uh, Mr. Reed. Go right ahead and then we'll go over here to Fernando. Go ahead, Reed. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire Service. For all three of you guys, um, you've got three guys within 12 points of the, of, the, of the lead right now, unlike the other two series where you've got uh, one guy leading and another 20 points back. Does that make your approach to the race more complicated than it otherwise would be? I know, James, you've got a number that you've got to hit in order to shut them out, but are you guys watching each other pretty closely during the course of the evening? I, I mean, I have a number that, that I have to hit to guarantee myself, but that's if they lead the most laps and win the race. Um, so, you know, we have to approach it the same way that the other guys do. They have a number as well. Theirs is just not as low of a number. Um, so, I don't know. Like I said, I guess we just like to keep it interesting. It, it could have been a 20-point spread, but, uh, you know, two to go, we, we blew a tire. So. I look at it as uh, all or nothing. We need to come in here and uh, probably just like uh, the other two, Austin and James, they want to lead the most laps and win the race and whatever. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I got Austin on my mind. Ty. Uh, Ty. <laughs> You know, lead the most laps and win the race. You know, so we got a lot of real estate that uh, both all three of us got to cover. So, uh, from my position, I, I like being the guy chasing James. So it's going to be interesting. Okay. Well, uh, my number is one. You know, we got to win the race, lead the most laps, and and put the pressure on everybody else. And uh, that's our main focus this weekend. And anything short of that's not going to be acceptable for us to win the championship. I don't think. Very good. Fernando. Thank you. Fernando Fiore from Univision. I live here in Miami. Welcome, guys. And uh, Timothy, uh, you seem a little nervous right now. And uh, do you think that tonight you will be able to sleep thinking that you have to catch up with James? Or in a month, you won't sleep at all. So that will be a different when you have a kid. Uh, believe it or not, it's, I've got the best sleep this week than I have all week, you know. Uh, I'm ready to, to get it going, you know. I wish we were getting on track this afternoon. But uh, you're right. I'm resting up now because next month about this time definitely won't won't get any sleep. So as uh, far as being nervous, I mean, I got a little bit there. Uh, always have. You know, my dad always told me that uh, if he wasn't, then something was wrong. So it's, uh, it's going to be good. Who has the next question? Raise your hand. Let's go right here with Mike. Go ahead. Mike Henry from Speed.com. James, you have a little bit of breathing room, but you're in a situation where you you, know, you can't be too careful and you, can, you can't really overcharge things either. How do you how do you sort of work a balance between not wrecking the car early but but finishing high too? Uh, you know, the things that have happened to this this year uh, when we didn't finish in the top five or top ten uh, uh, is mechanical problems or stuff out of our control. Um, you know, blowing tires and, and having parts failures. Um, so we have to approach it like any other race we can. Uh, I, I think if we switch to defense, uh, you get too too worried about what these other two guys are doing, and uh, you know you don't focus on on your team and, and what you need to do on the racetrack. So um, we just got to st stay focused on, on our team, run our race, uh, just like we have every other week, and uh, hope we have luck on our side to to not have any failures because. And when we haven't had failures, we've, we've ran really well everywhere this season. So, um, you know, that's our plan. Go ahead, Don. Don Culver with Morris News Service. As a follow-up to that, uh, James, and for all three of you, will 
Will all of you, will you want to know where the other people are? Or is that too much to think about during a race to say, all right, you know, where's Timothy? Where's Ty? Where's James? How do we stand? What, I mean, is that too much to think about during a race? I think that's uh, switching to defense, um, you know, for us. So, I, I mean, my team's aware of it because they have the, the screens right in front of them. But, uh, you know, if I don't see them out my windshield, I know they're be behind me. So, uh we just need to plan on running up front and uh, running our race, like I said. So if I get too worried about what they're doing, uh, we'll start making mistakes. Who else has questions? Right here. Go ahead. Uh, Dwight Drum, RaceTake.com. Uh, as far as the truck series goes, uh, the excitement that, uh, that it seems to be generating over the last couple of years, say, it, could you talk a little bit about that, to, about fans, any of you or all of you? Uh, what what it, the excitement of it means to you? Uh, you know, it's just it's hard racing from the time the uh, the race starts with the green until the checkered. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's n there's no time to ride or or be cautious, and it, it's all out. Uh, you know, from Daytona to Martinsville, you know, there's literally bumper tag and door slamming, and I think that's what makes everything intriguing about the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and. Uh, here we are in Homestead, and it's going to come down to the last lap of who, do, who wins this championship. So, uh, you know, everywhere we go, um, whether it's your hometown or, um, you know, Vegas to back East Coast, everybody's talking big buzz about the series. And, uh, you know, you had a lot of teams, uh, new teams come in this year, and you, you hear uh, more coming next year. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool to see the way the series has grown. Anybody else care to comment about that? I think he hit it pretty good. Uh, you know, the the shorter races, uh, you have less time to get it done, so you, you have to go out there and get it done. And uh, you know, the competition's so tight. Krista talked about it. Uh, you know, nine different or nine first-time winners, fifteen different winners this season. That's that's a lot of teams that are capable of winning races, and uh, and we've had less races in the other series. So um, to be coming to Homestead with the closest points battle does, doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, the way the, the air moves around with these trucks, you, you can't get away from each other. So, you know, everybody's packed in a, in a tight pack, and then we're only allowed a certain amount of, of tires. So then there's a strategy game that's that's pulled into a, a giant pack of trucks that can put any good truck up front at any time and uh, allow young drivers to, to get up front and show what they're made of. And I think that's why you see such a variety of winners and great finishes in, in the truck series. And I think it's the... the fastest growing the series that, that we have right now that people really sit down and watch the truck race because they know it's going to be an exciting race. Let's go back in the back. Claire? Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. With you guys being so young and so much on the line and you seem so calm, do you have people that are giving you advice? Do you want advice? Do you have uh, veteran drivers that you go to? Or do you just prefer to kind of go off on your own and kind of run your own race? How is it behind the scenes? Uh, you know, it's one of those deals where you, you get all the advice that you uh, can stand, I guess. But then at the end of the day, uh, when you show up, after this is all over with, it's game on. And you want to go off on your own and just think about it and however the cards uh, are dealt to you. That's what your hand is. But uh, I guarantee you that Foreigner uh, Head Game song is pretty popular this weekend. Yeah, for me, uh, you know, my wife gives me a lot of motivation. Um, everybody that I can think of tries to give me advice. I can't tell you the number of text messages I've gotten this week from people I haven't talked to in six months. And uh, that doesn't help, for sure. I mean, they're, they're trying to help, but it doesn't. Um, but, you know, there, there's a plan, and whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen. And uh, it's just part of it. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out, and uh, hopefully it plays out in my favor. Uh, everybody knows my family, so... Um they like to talk, so I'm getting plenty of advice, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been great. And the best advice is just to go out and win races. You know, that's the, the way to, to gain the most points in, in NASCAR, and that's the only thing I can look to do. And pressure's off of us, just to go win races. And that's, um, you know, I've got it from my brother who won the championship last year, my dad and my grandfather. Everybody at RCR has really been helpful. So um, we're just head down trying to, trying to win a race. Thank you, gentlemen. That concludes our question and answer session with our three NASCAR Camping World Truck Series championship contenders. Thanks to Ty, Timothy, and James. All three will be available downstairs in our breakout sessions. Right now, please join me back in welcoming our co-host from ESPN, Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace. Thanks, Kerry. Appreciate it. 
Well, as with the truck series, we're going to bring up all three nationwide series drivers to the stage. And I'll tell you what, they're the last three standing. They got a lot of pressure on them. And we've had 32 races this year. There's been a lot of wrecking and banging, a lot of excitement going on, and it's getting right down to the wire. So it features a, a lot of veterans and some up-and-comers. So this is going to be a great year for them, a great last race for them. I think they're all excited. They're ready to go. He'll be first of the checkers today in Phoenix. Sadler wins it. Stenhouse squeezing in front of Sadler. Championship leader Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has crashed on the back straightaway. Car three to the checkered flag, Austin Dillon. And to be able to win your first race like this, take over the points lead. This is a huge time for Austin Dillon. He is going to be black flag for jumping the restart. NASCAR just taking the championship right from me. He found a way to pull it together and refocus. He was 10 points down. Right now, in the show, 20 points down. And now let's meet the three championship contenders in the Nationwide Series. Coming into Saturday's Ford EcoBoost 300, third place, 25 points out of the lead, is last year's Camp World Truck Series champion, and he's Ty Dillon's older brother, but still he's only 22 years old. <laughs> Welcome, and please, please uh, give a hand for the number three driver, the Advocare Chevrolet, Austin Dillon. Where's the hands at, guys? All right. <laughs> Second place in the Nationwide Series standings is last year's runner-up, and he's won four times this year. And he comes in 20 points out of the lead. Here's a driver, the number two, one main fan of Chevrolet for RCR, Elliot Sadler. And now our points leader in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. He's got a season-high six victories, a lot of wins. He's also had a chance to become the sixth driver in history to win back-to-back -back NASCAR Nationwide Series championships. Let's welcome the driver of the number six Ford EcoBoost Ford for Roush Fenway Racing, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. <laughs> Guys, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We'll start off with some opening questions for each one of you. Austin, you're up first, okay? You won the Truck Series Championship last year, and now you've had a fantastic rookie season in Nationwide Series. I'd like you to talk about what's it like to have such a great career at such a young age. Well, uh, you know, the, the best thing about this is uh, it's, it's been a good rookie year, and, and coming into the series, you know, you expect, uh, you, you want to set your goals high, and we did going into this year. Our, our first goal was to win Rookie of the Year, and I think we pretty much accomplished that, and then having a chance to come to Homestead with a championship shot, and uh, we gave ourselves that. So we accomplished two of our goals, and uh, I'm very proud of that, and, and then also getting the victory lane. So uh, I can't thank all of my guys, RCR, and everything that's, that's worked really well together this year, and it's, uh, it's been a great year. Elliot, you're up next. I know it was a heartbreak for you last week, man, no doubt about that. And I don't see any smiles on your face whatsoever. But one good thing is that, Elliot, this year you and Ricky have swapped the points lead five times this season. What would it mean for you to have one more swap Saturday and try to close this deal? Well, I think it would be a good storyline if we swap it six times this yeah. year. That's what I think. Yeah, last week was definitely a, a tough race for us. I, uh, you know, made a mistake and put our team in a hole coming here to Homestead. Uh, 20 points is not undoable, but we know Ricky really runs well at this racetrack. But, you know, us for our team just need to go out and do the best job we can this weekend, try to run up front, lead some laps, try to win the race, and just let the points fall where they may. But uh, I'm not disappointed at all in the season we've had. We've won a lot of races, won some polls, been in the points lead, you know, a high majority of the races this year. We've definitely been in contention. And, and that's what our goal was when we went to Daytona. So we just got one more race to, to try to finish it off, and uh, we're going to put our best foot forward and, and see where it takes us on Saturday. All right, Dolly, thanks a lot. We wish you luck. Now to our points leader, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr. Ricky, five drivers have won back-to-back -back NASCAR Nationwide Series championships. Sam Ard, Larry Pearson, Randy LaJoy, Dale Earnhardt, Jr., and Martin Truex, Jr. What would it mean for you to join that group? That'd be huge. Uh, you know, that was the goal that we set coming into this year. Uh, I think, um, you know, we, we set a few goals. We wanted to, to win, you know, six to ten races, and I was hoping we were going to be closer to ten. But, uh, you know, the six is, is a great accomplishment for our team. Uh, I think we've ran a lot better. We've scored way more points uh, than we did last year. And, and, you know, even going into last weekend, we were tied in points. So I think... Um, it's a testament to, to this series um, and, and how well Elliot and his guys have ran and Austin and his guys 
uh, it seems like the, the level of competition has really stepped up this year, and, and that's, that's really cool to see. It's been fun to be a part of. And, um, you know, we're, we're coming down to my favorite racetrack, so I can't think of a better place to finish it off. All right, Ricky, thanks a lot. Now to conduct our question and answer session, we'll bring back up Kerry. Kerry, it's all yours. Thank you, Rusty. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you all know the drill. If you have a question, raise your hand, and we'll uh, hear from Elliot. We'll hear from Ricky, and we'll hear from Austin. Questions? Looks like Holly has a question right here. Aaron? Thank you, Holly. Kane, NASCAR.com. I'm just curious, in, in other years and, and, and some of the different series, there's been a lot of playful interaction heading into the championship weekend. What is the relationship between the three of you? And it, is there, you know, much kidding going on? Is there much talking, trash talking going on? What has that been like heading here into the last race? Well, I think you know us. There's a lot of talking going on, but it's, uh, it's you know, I mean, we get along. We, we're, we've we been with each other the last, you know, Elliot and I have, you know, the last two years racing, uh, parked in the garage next to each other every week. And, um, you know, our teams get along. We fly on the same planes. So um, if you don't get along, it makes for a long season. So uh, this year has been fun with these guys, uh, you know, bringing Austin in with us. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just been, a, I guess, a regular relationship, if you want to call it, friendship. I mean, it's, you know, you always get on the racetrack. You, each one of us want to beat each other as, as much as the other one does, and, and we go out to do that, to do that every week. And, um, you yeah, know, but off the racetrack, it, you know, it's, it's a friendship. Yeah, I'll second that. I think Ricky and I learned a lot about each other last year, like he said, parking next to each other, and it's a mutual respect, I think. He makes me better as a race car driver, and I learn things from him. And I think, um, you know, he learned things from me. And I think it's uh, we definitely want to outrun each other on the racetrack, but we want to do it the right way. And um, you know, it's been it's been fun the last two years. So I think it's uh, it's hadn't really been a talking, mouthing back and forth relationship. It's been more that I know my team and I need to outrun them, and I think they know they need to outrun us. And that's the kind of relationship we've had the last two years. So I think it's kind of boils on that. Yeah, you know, I get along with both of them, but I hope it gets nasty this on Saturday, personally. <laughs> I hope they door slam each other off of turn four and I make it to the smoke. But, no, uh, I'm actually waiting for uh, Elliot to give back Ricky what he owes him at Richmond and Bristol this year. I'm still trying to figure out when that's going to happen. <laughs> Very good. Next question. Let's go here, here to Fernando, and then we'll go to Mike. Well, Austin, talking about relationships, I see that uh, you're getting so-so along with them. What is the situation at home with, uh, with Ty? Uh, this is another relationship that probably is not going so well for bragging rights at the family, huh? <laughs> for, for me and Ty? No, we've had good years, man. It's, uh, it's, it's a great, great uh, week with uh, coming to Homestead and both having a chance to win a championship. And, and uh, you know, RCR won the cup race last week. That was really big for for our team and and uh welcome north carolina it's it's good right now so yeah it's it's a good year other than uh, i am pushing ty i hope he can uh can finish off the championship and i think he's got a great shot going into friday let's go right here to mike and then jeff go ahead mike mike <clears throat> mike henry speed.com ricky you found out during this season that you'd be moving up to cup in a really solid situation next year what, what was the impact on that of that on this year for you? Was it sort of an emotional lift for you, or, or did the races you ran on the other side take some time away from Nationwide? What, what was the balance of all that? Uh, you know, the announcement, I guess, was kind of um, exciting, the, the news of going into the 17 car with, with Matt's sponsors, um, you know, Best Buy, Zest, and Fifth Third. But... Jack and I had been talking about running a, a fourth cup car anyway next year, so uh, it really wasn't news that we were going to go full-time cup. We kind of had already had that uh, in the works. Um, so it didn't really change my outlook on the season, uh, but it, it is comforting knowing that, that you have that um, already in, in place. Uh, last year I came in to, to Homestead. Uh, we won the championship, and, and we still didn't know if we were running cup or nationwide uh, for 2012. Uh, until the end of December, so that was that's always nerve-wracking. So it's always nice to to have that uh, in the back of your mind. And um, you know, I really haven't thought anything about 2013 since we've made that announcement uh, because we got a job to do here. Let's go, Jeff, and then we'll go to Clara. Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Gluck from SBNation.com. Elliot, um, I'm just wondering over here um, if you're down by 20 points and maybe you can't make that up on the track. Do you kind of have to openly root for Ricky to? blow a tire or somebody to wreck him or something along those lines? 
Um, honestly, I, I think when you're inside the car, you, I'm, I've always been more focused on what we're doing. I mean, if something happens to Ricky, we're going to try to take advantage of it. But it's not like I'm riding around waiting for something to happen to him. We've got to go out and run our race and see where it takes us. Because if we don't run our race and do our job, it doesn't matter if something happens bad to him or not anyway. So uh, we might throw a banana peel under his trailer since we parked beside him anyway before the race starts and see if that ha will help him out a little bit. But, uh, you know, we, we got to... The way we're looking at it, we got to go do our job and just see where, you know, just kind of see where the chips fall. Go ahead, Claire, and then Bob. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. So much talk about the identity of the Nationwide Series, and with trucks, it's tough trucks. And headed into this championship, and you guys all have sort of different roles and different levels of where you're at. What, what do you see the identity as this series headed into this championship run? I think the series has done a great job the last couple of years creating a great identity. Um, I think it's got a lot of storylines. It's got a lot of promising drivers in this series. And, and Ricky just talked about how many points we've scored this year. Uh, you got to run really good to, to be a part of the series. And I think uh, the nationwide regulars won a lot of races this year, um, which, is, which is good. It seems like that number is growing every single year since people have started to keep account of that now because of the point system. So I, I think, honestly, that the Nationwide Series and Nationwide as a, as a company has done a great job identifying different drivers in their series, and I feel like we're, we're doing a good job as far as competition on the racetrack. I think those guys know when they come down to race, uh, you know, the guys that race on Sunday come down to race on Saturday, that it's, it's not really going to be handed to them, that, you know, they got a battle to try to get the victory lane, and I think that's, uh, I think that's definitely good for the sport, and, and it's good for the Nationwide Series. I agree with what Elliot's saying about how when the cup guys come down that they have to really know that we're not going to give it to them and, and uh, we're racing for a championship and a, and a win just as hard as they are. So it's, uh, it has, I think, changed the identity of the sport the last few years. And uh, it's, it's very cool to be out here and, and, and driving against these guys. And uh, just to, to have a chance to, to go into a championship weekend, it's pretty cool. And have three drivers. I think it was two last year, so there's three this year. And, and then you actually throw in, you know, Sam Hornish had a great year in there for a long time. There was four of us dicing up, pushing each other to, to get those top fives. All right, let's go with Bob, and then we'll go to Marty. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. Uh, Ricky, you're, you're on the entry list for Cup. Are you running that, that race? And was there any thought about not running it? Or were you thinking that, uh, especially with you working with Scott next year, that was important to do this race? Uh, no, we, Jack asked me if I thought it was going to be a problem, and, and I never did. So I, I think, um, you know, we're race car drivers. We, you know, I've ran the Nationwide car for the last three years now, and, uh, you know, I know, a, I know the feel that I'm looking for in that. And so when I jump over in the cup car, uh, you know, it doesn't really throw me off any. I come back to the Nationwide car, and, and I know exactly what I need to do in the, in the Nationwide car. And, um, you know, I like track time. I like being uh, on the racetrack. I, you know, for race car drivers, we hate, you know, listening to the cars practice and, and we're sitting in the garage or, or sitting in the motorhome, you know, watching it. So uh, I think it's going to be a great weekend for us uh, running both. And uh, to get another race in with Scott before next year, I think, is, is going to be a huge help, too. Let's go over to the far right. Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Elliot, we saw your initial reaction last weekend, only up to making a mistake. When you removed yourself from it all, gone from the racetrack, how did those emotions change, and what were those emotions once you kind of had solitude and were away from the circus? Yeah, that, that's a really good question, Marty, and it's, um, you know, I still take the blame. It's one or two things that, if, that happened on the racetrack last week that could have really changed where we finished and how our racing um, points could have been different uh, at the end of the race. A little break here, a little uh, different line there, a little not mistake here or there. So things could have been definitely different. But, you know, I look back on it as a mistake, and I talked to my team about it and could, could have done a better job. But, you know, i got to come back this weekend and 100% uh, focused and ready to go and, um, you know, try to make up a really big deficit at, at, a, at a tough racetrack uh, as far as giving up points from, from Ricky's side. So um, it was a tough week. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a long week just because uh, I felt like um, – you know, I put ourselves in a really big hole. we got to have a really big weekend this weekend. Okay, that concludes our NASCAR Nationwide Series question and answer session. I want to thank Elliot, Ricky, and uh, Austin uh, for being up here today. And all three of them will be available downstairs in our breakout sessions later this afternoon. Please welcome back our co-host, Chris Devota and Rusty Wallace.
Thank you, gentlemen. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship comes down to just two men, one trying to win the title for the sixth time, the other for the very first time. Well, and I'll tell you, both of these guys, both of these contenders have drove their cars to the limits. I mean, they have drove harder than I've ever seen anybody drive in a long time. And in the process, it seems like they've created a rivalry and formed uh, an already compelling season together. So this is going to be something I can't wait to watch. Uh, I really don't know if these guys get along at all, do they? <laughs> we'll have to see. Here's the dominant car of the leader, Jimmy Johnson. Bring it to us this time. Are you ready? Go like hell. Hard, hard, hard. Look at Brad Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson as they come back onto the racetrack. Keselowski looked the five-time champion in the eye, and he did not blink. Today he will win and make another huge statement about his intent in this year's championship. Jimmy Johnson breaks loose. Jimmy Johnson goes back into the lead of the championship point standings. Jimmy Johnson powers on the outside. Keselowski diving back to the inside. The champion championship. Jimmy Johnson grabs his fifth win of 2012. Trouble up the third for it. Jimmy Johnson. Brad avoids several bullets and goes into the championship point lead by 20. The NASCAR Spring Cup season started back in February under the lights in Florida. On a Monday night, we will end in November under the lights once again in Florida. The ninth annual chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup season has highlighted a former champion and a potential future champion. And now in week 36 of the season, something's got to give, and in my opinion, it will. Welcome, please. Our second place driver coming into Sunday's Ford EcoBoost 400, the five-time champion of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, driver of the number 48 Lowe's Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports, Jimmy Johnson. And here's our championship point leader in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. <laughs> they, hey, you guys, they clap like I hug. Sort of, sort of half in. It's a press conference, so I know. It's, you never know. Do you clap or not? I was going to say, either go big or go home. <laughs> and our championship points leader, Brad Keselowski, drive the number two Miller Lite car. Thank you. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Jimmy, a somewhat strange position for you this weekend, because in four of the five years you've won the championship, you've come into Homestead leading the points. Now, similar as to 2010, you come in as the chaser. I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Can you pull off another late race comeback? Yeah, I definitely think it's, it's possible. Um, you look at our... Um, bad luck last weekend. You know, there's still a race here, and, and there's still hard tires on these race cars, and something can happen there. There's still a lot of very uh, tough competition on the track. Um, you know, then this just isn't any other race. Um, this is the championship race, and there's a lot that comes with that. So uh, I'm very optimistic. I think that we'll have a very fast race car, and uh, we'll go, go out onto the racetrack and do all that we can each and every lap of every practice session, qualifying, and race. And, uh, and see how things play out. You know, I find a, another th point of uh, motivation and optimism. You know, we look at the IndyCar championship and how it unfolded at, at Fontana. Um, it seemed like it was a layup race. And, you know, things can happen. This is racing. So um, I think either way we'll be in good shape. We'll, uh, we'll have a fast race car and go out and race hard. And then if, you know, some luck comes our way, we'll hopefully be um, you know, ready to capitalize on that as well. Well, Brad, I'm trying to stay neutral here. There's no doubt about that. But you know I got a special affinity for that number two car. That's also, also been a, a very special car for me. And, and I think about Roger Penske a lot. Never winning a NASCAR Cup title. Uh, Becoming close many times, though. What would it mean for you to be the first guy to bring home that title for Penske and that entire group? Well, thanks, Rusty. I, I think i got to push this button down since this is a big thing. How about that? Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, you know, to win a championship for Roger uh, would certainly be a huge accomplishment uh, considering everything he's been through in American motorsports and beyond. Uh, you know, you look at uh, his legacy in the sport and you, uh, you can't help but feel that uh, uh, he's been a little bit slighted on the NASCAR side. So um, we'd like to, uh, to get that job done. And I think we have the opportunity to do it. Uh, I think we have the team and car. Uh, and it's just a matter of putting all the pieces together. And so far, that's happened this year. Uh, there's no guarantee that will continue to happen. But, you know, I think you look at trends and you, you try to, to, to label how things can happen. And there's a very strong possibility. So, uh, you know, for us, it's about focusing on getting the job done. 
uh, and try not to think about all those other things, whether it's you know what it means or uh, what obstacles lie ahead. It's it's about uh, you know just focusing on what we need to do, and uh, you know the the history books and the life lessons and so forth. Uh, those things will work their way out in the end if you just get the job done, and I think that's where our focus is. All right, Brad, thanks a lot. To conduct the question and answer period, we're going to bring back up Kerry Thorpe. Okay. For our final segment here today at the Championship Contenders Press Conference, we've got questions for Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll start right here with Jeff, and then we'll go to this young man over here to the left. Jeff Clark from SBNation.com. Jimmy, um, given the deficit, do you feel like you have to root for something bad to happen to Brad, or would you consider roughing him up uh, in order to put him back somewhere, in, back in the field? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, to, to think that a uh, top 15 finish is a layup is, is, is tough. I mean, this garage area is tough. Um, you know, the, the weight of this race, I don't care who you are, it'll show up at some point in time and, and thoughts will run through your head. And, uh, you know, with all that being said, a 15th place finish isn't a layup for these guys. So, you know, I have a, have a little bit of stock in that and we'll, we'll see how they respond. I mean, their trends this year have been strong, but this is a different race. Um, then as far as the luck category, it, you know, we were unlucky and, and anybody can. Um, anybody can be so uh, you know there's that element of you know, that exists out there and we'll just see where it all all unfolds but you know there's there's a line of racing hard to answer your final part of your question and we both have proven we're willing to race hard and I certainly am willing to race hard down here um, it's not my style to go drive through somebody and, and create the opportunity that's that's not me um, so I'm gonna race as hard as I possibly can and, and uh, see where things fall Gentlemen to the left, Don Coble, and then Jenna. Go ahead. John Roger, NASCAR Fridays. His question's for Brad. Brad, at the beginning of the season, uh, you did something spectacular with social media. You had your phone in your car, and during the red flag at Daytona, you are able to tweet. It was on Twitter. It was going crazy. People were following you like crazy, and it was trending nationwide. It made a big impact on the sport. Uh, coming into the last weekend, you got fined for having your phone in your car. So the question I have for you is, will you still bring it into your car for this race? Or what do you think that means for the future of being able to tweet or be a part of Twitter in the social media world during a red flag at the race? Well, I think your first part was, would I put it in my car this weekend? Is that what your first question was? You got two questions. He earned two questions. I, I don't know. You haven't got right. two questions. So you got, you got to pick one. Which one do you want? All right. All right. Uh, the second one. What does it mean? What does it mean for the for the future? Of what does it mean for the future? Okay, I'll answer that one. That's a good one. Uh, I think it means that you can still be involved in social media, but I think NASCAR's uh, certainly said that they want to draw a line as to what you can do specifically in the car, uh, and I think that's what it means for the future. Let's go to Don Coble, Jenna Fryer, and George Diaz. Go ahead, Don. Right here. Sorry. Don Coble with Morris News Service. Both of you know what the scenarios are. Will, will you have your teams let you know how you stand, or, do you, or is that too much to think about during the race? Do you want to know where the other guy is, how many positions you got to get, or do you kind of wait till you get down to you know, the last 50 laps to start thinking about stuff like that? I mean, I I'm, don't really know how to answer. I mean, I guess you could look at it that way, but you know if you go out there and run well, uh, at least from my position, that it all takes care of itself. So uh, with maybe the exception of the last lap or two, I got a pretty good idea where I'm at on the racetrack, or I should, uh, and, and that stuff works its way out if we're in a good position. Yeah, and just to add to that, I mean, if we get to the end of the race and, um, you know, they're not having the, the day that, you know, that they would hope to have, you know, that, that information could it's really probably not going to change anything that I do. I mean, I still need every spot I can get on the track, but um, I'm sure information will, will come in. And even if it isn't specific, I can tell, I will be able to tell by the tone in Chad's voice as to if we're in the good or the bad. Let's go with Jenna, then we'll go George, and then we'll go to uh, Mike Brunel. Jennifer, AP, um, I'm going to ask two, even though I'm not allowed, Brad. Uh, but I guess it's one for both of you. As the uh, psych major or the, the pretend psych major of the group, Jimmy, you, uh, I can't help but notice you, you brought up the IndyCar championship and what happened there. And you um, 
you said is a, a top 10, 15, a top 15 finish is no layup. It seems, you know, you're kind of tweaking it a little bit, maybe intentional, maybe not. And we know from the past, I guess, two championships, you guys messed with Denny a little bit up there. Um, Carl got a little rattled from Tony. Um, maybe you're doing it on purpose, maybe you're not. Uh, is that the intent, it, to put the weight uh, on Brad? And Brad, you seem to just be sitting there, square jawed, looking straight ahead. Uh, are you, are you, yeah, you can smile. I mean, are you too dumb to know any better or, you know? <laughs> wow. I thought Jimmy was going to be tough. Dang. And, and, you know, and I mean Jimmy's that. Jimmy's got a lot of work to do to catch up with her. <laughs> no. And I mean that with, with all due respect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think right. you watch Talladega Nights too much. <laughs> Let's stay on topic here. Jimmy, go ahead. Um, you know, there, of course, I'm going to find points that uh, give myself motivation in my team. And if there's anything I can do, and Brad, if you'd like me to call you later and remind you of any other examples, I, I certainly can of guys that you know didn't pull off the season finale as they would hope. But, um, you know, one thing I've learned is that regardless of, of how experienced anyone is in this championship battle, at some point, the magnitude of it hits you. And um, at some point, he may be very comfortable and calm now. It may not happen until he's in the car. But at some point, that magnitude hits. And I, I've lived through it five times. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a turning moment. And, and we'll see how, you know, he responds. It also carries over to guys changing tires. I mean, there's some point where every member on that race team goes, this is it. This is what I've worked so hard for. And uh, I'll be glad to point out those moments as needed. Brad, do you have any uh, rebuttal there? I think my question is, how dumb am I? And Roger has seen Will Power, you know, fall victim to it, you know, four times. So what are you doing to not, you know, let this rattle you? This is in the opportunity to win a championship? Uh, well, I, I think that it's not something that you can uh, really answer in a sense that's easy for this group to understand. Um, and that, that, that's not, sorry, maybe that was a jab back. <laughs> I've been listening to too much Tony Stewart. Um, but I, I think it, it comes from, you know, the people that you're surrounded by uh, and how comfortable they are, and that comes into your own world. Uh, and I, I can tell you that the group that I have uh, and that I'm surrounded by, uh, whether it's in my personal life or professional life, uh, they're not known for being very rattled in these opportunities uh, and these positions. Uh, and I think that's probably the, the biggest thing that you can do is be surrounded by people that, uh, that share that same passion that you have, but also uh, uh, put out a, a level of calmness that uh, is somewhat uh, addictive. And, um, you know, I feel like if you look at Paul, uh, Paul's pretty stone-faced. Uh, and that's his style. He's not a, a real emotional guy. And certainly you cue off of that, just like Jimmy was saying he does with Chad. Uh, and there's other guys. You look at Roger. Roger's the same way. Uh, you're not going to see Roger uh, showing a bunch of emotion, even if we do win it. You know, he's, he's going to be very stoic, as he always is, which is great. Uh, and my, yeah, my family life, personal life, is the same way, whether it's my, uh, my dad or, or mom. When, they, you know, they have their successes, they're uh, certainly very uh, uh, passionate and happy for them. But... Uh, they're also very, uh, very quiet and, uh, you know, very capable of moving forward and looking forward uh, to not get too caught up in the moment. So for me, I guess the best way to answer is I rely on the people I'm surrounded by. Let's go George, Mike, and then Lee. Go ahead, George. Yeah, Brad, George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel. The, the points and, you know, as Jimmy stated, it's, you know, 15th. Uh, 15th place finish is not a layup. How much is when you start crunching numbers, if you will, approaching the race? I mean, how much of that do you do in, in, in terms of uh, affecting your mindset and in, in terms of affecting your approach to the race? I assume it doesn't change, but I also think that it's human nature not to think about, hey, you know, this is an, I've got a pretty good shot here. Well, Mr. Diaz, I, I haven't crunched a lot of numbers, to be honest. Not those types. Um, you know, I can tell you what kind of fuel mileage we're going to get, but I got no idea about the, you know, trends and patterns of the average finish and so forth. But I know if we go out there and just do our jobs, everything will take care of itself. Uh, so to put your focus on those other things is just a, another distraction that doesn't serve the goal that we have. 
Uh, so I haven't done it. Let's go to Mike. Let's go to Lee and then Nate. Go ahead. Yeah, Mike uh, Brudenall from the Detroit Free Press. Brad, no pressure on you, mate, but uh, you'd be the first Michigan-born driver if you win um, on Sunday to claim uh, the Spring Cup title. Uh, how does it make you feel? I mean, obviously pretty proud, I'd guess. Um, Detroit needs a boost. Uh, the, the, the Tigers lost the World Series. H how does it all play in? Well, I mean, it, I'd be glad to help out. How about that? Um, you know, obviously, I'm very proud of the roots that I have back in Michigan and specifically in the, you know, the metro Detroit area uh, and have strong roots still to the area with my uh, family living there and car owner who's based out of uh, uh, the Detroit area. So uh, I think it would be, you know, a very powerful moment for sure, uh, at least for me and hopefully for the area and community. Uh, so anything that we can do to serve that uh, just plays into uh, uh, some of the heritage of our team. Uh, and makes us stronger. Let's go Lee, Nate, and then Melinda. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Brad, when you think back to Rochester Hills and that little white cinder block shop that your, your dad raced out of and your grandfather raced out of Michigan, when you think back to all of that and how far you've come, and it, you know, it could have gone the other way, you could be where Brian is right now, what does that mean to you? You know, what will that mean to the Keselowski family who's really scraped and, you know, to get where you are today? Well, it's hard to speak for everyone in my family, and I don't want to pretend to do that. But I also know that, um, you know, I have somewhat of a read on them. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny when you brought that up. My brother, I was thinking of the parallels between Jimmy and I and our brothers and, and where we're at in sports, and we both want to see them be successful. Uh, and obviously that hasn't worked out for, for them and uh, as far as being a race car driver uh, at, at this level. And both of us probably want to see that happen. Uh, but it's not it's not easy uh, and it's a difficult balance I know my brother's planning on coming down here uh, for the weekend on Sunday uh, or I should say for the day on Sunday uh, and that's gonna be great I'm glad to have him here and or any family for that matter uh, and, and I think if you know uh, the personal relationship that my brother and I have you would understand why that's such an accomplishment for him to be here Sunday um, so I think that probably speaks more volumes than anything else as to uh, how my family uh, is feeling that, that those moments. Uh, you know, my dad is the type of guy that would probably never tell you good job to your face. Uh, but if he spoke to you or did an interview with you, he would say, wow, man, you got to see what Brad's done. It's great. And I feel awesome about it. So I have to rely on those outside things, those, those nuances, so to speak. Um, so it's it's good to see him as well at the racetrack this weekend, and, and my brother and my mom and, and so forth, sisters coming out. Uh, so that that makes me feel uh, feel like it really means a lot to them. We got time for three more questions. We're going to go with uh, Nate, Melinda, and end back in the corner with Bob. Nate Ryan, USA Day uh, for Jimmy. Uh, you said that uh, at some point the magnitude hits you uh, for everybody and it affects the, the, the contenders in some way. But um, a few weeks ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. said about Brad Keselowski that he's so mentally tough, he didn't think he was going to crack. So something you see from Brad that makes you think otherwise? And, and what happens in, the, in that moment when the magnitude does hit you? How do you respond to it? What, what, what makes that championship medal that you need to, to win a championship? Well, me trying to explain what it's like and how I've handled it would probably be kind of stupid to me right now. So I'm going to not answer the second part of your question. Um, the first part is, you know, the, the magnitude sets in at some point. I mean, just to answer your question about family. And, and I've, I've been there, and I, I've been the guy leading the points, and people are so curious to know all these what ifs. You know, what if it happens? And, and you're forced to answer questions that you're not used to answering, that you don't want to answer and you know builds through the course of the week so <clears throat> again it hits everybody differently and there's no guarantees how it'll hit them but i know from my own experience that there have been those moments and uh fortunately i responded well to them we'll we'll see how the weekend goes we had the next question we had two more melinda and then bob Melinda Adams, ESPN. Um, Brad, this question's for you. You know, you've said all along you're going to come here, you're going to win it. You really only have to finish 15th. How do you change your mindset from being the go-all-out kind of driver you are to maybe kind of being conservative and playing it safe? You don't. Um, you know, I was, one of my favorite movies in the whole wide world is this uh, documentary on uh, Ayrton Senna. 
And there's this really powerful scene in that movie that sticks with me when I think about this weekend. Uh, I think about this scene in the movie where they, they talk about him at Monaco, which was his just phenomenal track that, you know, that he was so strong at and how he was, had this huge lead over his teammate at the time. Obviously, he had an identical car, which showcased what kind of talent Ayrton had. And uh, they were coming down to the closing laps of the race, and they told him to slow down. You have a huge lead. Don't worry. Just slow down. Just... And he wrecked. And I think of that as I approach this weekend. I'm going to go out there and play my game, race my way. That's got us to this point. And if we do that, we'll be fine. And I think that's our approach. Final question, Bob, and those that didn't get your questions in, remember they're available downstairs. Go ahead, Bob. Bob Dillner, Speed. Uh, Brad, Jimmy's played a little head games on you here, and you said you're relying on people and you're going to race your race this weekend. But what I want to know, this is a championship you're going after, the best of the best in racing. How does this weekend feel different, and if it doesn't, why? Well, I've been going for the championship all my life, and specifically this particular one for the last nine races. So uh, Homestead pays the same amount of points as Chicago did and the same amount of points that Martinsville did when Jimmy won. Uh, it's, it's the same, and there's no reason to change that approach, and that's why I feel that way. Okay, this concludes our formal part of the Q&A with Jimmy and Brad. As I said, they will be available downstairs. And to wrap up our event up here today, let's welcome back Chris DeVota and Thank Rusty Wallace. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Jimmy, you can take that with you if you'd like. Yeah. So there's yeah. proof. We've heard from eight drivers ranging in age from, Jimmy, 37, right? You're 37, correct? Yes. Ranging in age from 37 to 20, the future of the sport looks very bright. Of course, the immediate future is right here this weekend. Rusty, you know what it's like to win a championship. I can't see which, wait to see which drivers join you possibly for the first time. Well, it's, it's going to be a tough one. It really is. I mean, you see Brad, he's tough. He's, he's ready to go. And Jimmy, he's got his best car here. He's got the car he won Indianapolis with. He's got the car he won Dover with. I talked to him early. He's excited about that. And he's going to be throwing Hail Marys out there. So it's going to be a battle right to the very end. These two won it bad. And... Um, I think they barely like each other. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe all our championship contenders are heading. Yep, our championship contenders are going to be downstairs for about 40 minutes now. That's about it. So get on down there with your questions. They're looking forward to seeing you. And this will conclude the day's activities. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thank you. So now we have heard from the eight drivers that will go for a NASCAR championship this weekend in the Camping World Truck, Nationwide, and Sprint Cup Series. Of course, the big headliners, Brad Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson, going for the Cup title. And there were some stones being thrown on the stage. Jimmy Johnson talking about the difficulties for Brad Keselowski, who just needs to finish in the 15th position to claim his first championship. Jimmy said that is not going to be easy to do. Brad, though, stone-faced, maintained his composure and appears very confident as he tries to win his first championship and the first ever for Roger Penske at NASCAR's top level. Again, 20 points separating the top two going to Sunday afternoon season finale. we got a busy weekend on speed. 6 p.m. Eastern time, our NASCAR coverage continues. It's Race Hub. It's 7 p.m. inside Michael Waltrip Racing. And at 8 tonight, Kurt Busch, the outlaw, the debut there. At 9 p.m., we're back here in the Speed Center. Jeff Hammond will join me as we recap what you saw with our press conferences and look ahead to the final weekend on the NASCAR schedule. And tonight at 10, it's Beyond 200, the Hendrick Motorsports story. Thank you for being with us in the Speed Center. For Bob Dillner, I'm Adam Alexander. Enjoy your Thursday. We'll see you later this evening, everybody.